Hello, welcome to the final word controversial thing on the screen there, James. Mm -hmm. uh, Everton 4, Wolverhampton Wanderers nil at Goodison Park last night. Me and James are going to go through the game. A good result for the Sophies. Very good. James, a much needed victory for Everton and for Sean Dyche. Absolutely, yeah. I think, you know, with our November went and not scoring a goal and, you know, everyone was a bit down. I think there's a lot of speculation around the club and, you know, we've seen on the last people are just sort of, I don't want to say fallen out of love, but people are just mm -hmm down and I think this game just cemented that we are we can attack we can score goals and we can win a game mm -hmm. ultimately and I think it's really brought positivity around with everyone and gave us a bit of hope going into the derby that you know we can we can attack them we can get something if we need if we want to yeah I mean the manager he went with a midfield two of Mangala and Ghana I think mm -hmm. that was a good decision um the core he was in some people debated that whether to have him in the side yeah. or not but he played the core in the 10 almost Dwight McNeil was on the left and obviously Illiman and Jai was out on the right um, I thought Everton started quite well as in with the right intensity I don't think we played brilliantly and Wolves were in it as well early on mm -hmm. but I thought we started to maintain a couple of people have, have said oh I, I don't think I've really seen any difference but I did I thought we were mm -hmm. maybe we didn't maybe what it was was after 10 minutes when it hadn't worked, we didn't just throw it away like we Absolutely, normally yeah. done. We sort of carried on trying to get on the front foot and there was just a couple of times it was the final ball that was missing but the intention was there. But I think what I've seen too often is that you start off like sort of on that front foot and after 10 minutes they start just hitting long balls because it's not working and I, I think we mixed it up quite well last night. Yeah, I think... You know, that first 10 minutes was a bit shaky and I think big props need to be given to Pickford because he made two really good mm -hmm. saves where, you know, Everton's record when we can see first isn't the greatest. Mm -hmm. So I think Paul this definitely needs to be given to him that, you know, he made them crucial saves. Then obviously that gave us the platform to go and then win the game. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think maybe the final ball wasn't right, but instead of just being disheartened and, you know, sitting back and then allowing them to put the pressure on us, we kept in control of the match and... Mm -hmm. I think ultimately we got rewarded for that with the first goal and then obviously from there we built on top of that. And I think it was a, it was a different feel of Everton and there was a bit more decisiveness, a bit more impetus on everyone getting up and... Impetus. Up. Impetus. Very different than impotent. Yeah, impetus. 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 Yeah. And then, yeah. So we I have been impotent yeah. for the last month, but yeah, not last month. But yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think there was a bit of a change and I think it was, it was very positive. I think that's what... What did, you, what did you make of the first goal? Because obviously um, Wolves weren't happy about it and I understood where they were coming from. There was a ball through Dominic Calvert-Loon does really mm. well, gets across his man, is fouled. Then he plays the advantage, the ball runs through to the core, right? he runs on and smashes it over the bar. I mean, he should have hit the target. Yeah. Blazes it into the, the park end, lines and puts his flag up. And then the referee pulls it back and gives Everton the free kick. And yeah. I think when I've seen that before, more often than not, they give off shot yeah. and you, you're a bit you, you're going where was the advantage but it's gone whereas he didn't he give Everton the free kick and Wolves were fuming over it and then obviously mm. it's a bit of a sucker punch for them when uh, the resulting free kick ends up in the back isn't it yeah I think it was it's, it's definitely an interesting one because as you said there has been situations where they gave it but for me I think with the linesmen now where they let the, ball, the game carry on mm. and then they give off side I think with that sort of if he just put his flag up right away, they wouldn't have got the advantage and mm. then obviously he would have the free kick. So I think it's that rule. It's a bit of a dodgy rule anyway. Mm. I think. But that was how advantage should be though, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? Because Dominic Albert Lewin's running through and yeah. he's fouled and obviously the core race blazes it over. But I know, but it, I feel like it's not really an advantage if they know it's offside, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, mm. if nothing can come from the advantage, you're not, you're not getting an advantage. Probably. Well, Listen, Evan had the free kick. We can uh, we can have a look. We've just got a couple of stills from it. Um, it's James is going to work the magic button for here and get them on. Um, we want the other one first, Jay. You do me in here. Right, so this is the free kick. Obviously from behind the goal. We can see, I've got the arrow there between Lamina and, and the player over. He's broken the wall. There's a big, big gap there Very big. for Ashley Young to just bend it through. And you're thinking in that position, I'm sat in my seat thinking, just hit the target at least, yeah. you know, at least get it on target and see what happens. We take it on and we see Young's hit it. 
and you see, you can see where he's going. He's going through that gap past Lamina. Yeah. yeah, too well. And then obviously we've got the third, got Pickford circle. They <laughs> look at the open Pickford there, delighted and young wheels away in delight. And it was the first free kick, direct free kick scored by an Everton player in the Premier League at Goodison since 2018, December 2018. And Luca Dean scored a free kick in the 96th minute against Watford wow. in a 2 2 draw. I think it was six. That's from my, my my memory. Andre Gomez did score a direct free kick last season in the FA Cup against Crystal Palace, but in the Premier League at Goodison, that was the first one by an Everton player who was again another fullback, uh, Luca Dean, in in 2018 when Marco was the manager. So it was about time we scored a free kick. Absolutely, really good for him, young, seeing the gap, put it there. Jose Sar maybe could have done better, mm. as the young said after the game. The Wolves goalkeeper coach said, was there a gap in the wall? Because he wasn't happy yeah. with the goalie, obviously. And, and that was far too easy for them. But from our perspective, a great start and, Absolutely. and something to build on, platform to build on. I think for how they saw it, things a bit harsh. I think he should expect that his wall will block it if it goes at them. Should he make the wall bigger, though? So young, mm. it, it, Because think about it, that player being on the edge of the wall, would have blocked it. It means Young's got to go even further out to bring yeah. it back in and, and Sarr should have that covered, so... Mm. I think well, if you ask their goalie coach, he won't be happy with his goalie. Yeah. But still, but still, but, uh, good start, very good start. Mm. And you know, from there, I think Everton. You know, I think many times they've been a bit of a victim to they score a goal and then they don't really keep the same pressure mm. or the same sort of tactics, and then they sit back and invite it. I think in this one instead, they continue to go at it a bit mm. more, and they continue to put the pressure on them, and it, as a result, then obviously they went on and scored more. But mm. I think definitely this was a goal that. We needed because, as I said, they had two good chances before it from mm. Larson, you know, and Pickford made two really, a save from Cunha, and then mm. Larson had it across the box, and he just about missed it. Mm. So I think this was really important and definitely what we needed. And just after this, Larson had another chance. They got a throw in, didn't he? And he, he, he spun yeah, Brantwaite. It might have been it, and Pickford had to make another save to keep it at 1 0. And obviously, if Wolves would have equalised, we don't know what would have happened, but Jordan come up big again for us. And like, listen probably a save he should make but he saved it and that, that's all that matters keeping it out we then thought we got a second goal you know mm. inside the whatever it was was it 15 minutes or something yeah. and it looked like we were winning 2-0 looked like it, uh, you know you're looking at it the first thing is is the linesman got his flag up as Tarkovsky's headed it in no linesman doesn't have his flag up so you think it's a goal it's yeah. a goal we're celebrating then you see the all uh, referee on his ear and you're thinking oh come on what's happening here mm. and it was just the amount of time it took to get there. The manager said in his press conference today, why go to the screen? We all know the outcome of yeah. the screen. Yes, occasionally they go to the screen and they, hope they keep their original decision. But in general, going the screen means it's getting disallowed, doesn't it? Um, or if you go to the screen, you know a red card's coming. Or if you go, you know what I mean? They're Once they really go to the screen, the you sort of know what's happening. Yeah. Um, it just took a ridiculous amount of time. Now, they've Disallowed Tarkovsky's goal for offside by Mangala. Yeah. I'll be honest, I'm confused by this. I'm confused as well. Because I'm not confused if you say it's a foul. Yeah. I'm not confused by that. But for him to be offside, he's got to be interfering. If you're saying he's interfering because he's ahead when the ball's played, he doesn't go anywhere near the ball. Mm. So he's interfering by blocking Lamina. But if he's blocking Lamina, then is he a... F so they're saying it isn't a foul, but he's interfering with play. That's the conclusion they've come to. Yeah. So if they've come to that conclusion, why does the referee, Salisbury, have to go to the to the screen? Yeah. The team That's my thing. One, yeah. Do you know what I mean? We, we've, got, we've got a couple of stills from it here. And basically, this is the VAR looking at it. You can see quite clearly on that VAR image, Mangala's got his arms around Lamina. Yeah. Now, Lamina... We, we should have really put the image up before it. Um, but Lamina's touched tight with Tarkovsky, so he's got his hand on Tarkovsky's stomach to feel for where he is. Mm -hmm. As the ball's kicked, Mangala grabs him, as you can see there. And if we take it on, one to the other one we've got. Mangala, he, Lamina's to the left of Mangala, but Tarkovsky's got three players around him as he heads it in, as the ball's yeah. coming in. So Lamina's nowhere near it. Now, the argument... Oh, sorry, the consideration has to be, would Lamina have cleared the ball mm. before Tarkovsky 
if there'd been no Mangala. Well, I don't know, because Wolves have still got three men on Tarkovsky yeah. and he still wins the other. I think in the in the Carabao Cup final, when it was Liverpool Chelsea, it was Endo holding back Colwell, wasn't it? Mm. And Van Dijk had the free header, but Colwell was the, the man marking. Mm. So it got disallowed, which makes sense yeah, because have been the winner, he held him back, yeah. So, but this one, you look at the still and there's three people on him. So mm. it's not like he's been hard done by and there's mm. no one on him and he's just got a free header. He's still got to challenge three other people. So I don't really understand why it's not been given, if that makes sense. But I what know this, it's subjective yeah. and he's held them back. But it, does it interfere that much with... Well, what the, I suppose what they're saying is the interference is from a player who is offside. Yeah. But I, I would be more... Me would be more comfortable if they'd have just said he fouled Lamina. Yeah. He blocked him. So it's a foul. Then you go, OK. Because yeah, he, has, he has got hold of him. He's stopping him making a run. Mm. I understand that. But the offside bit, you sort of go, well, it's gone to a player who's got three men on him, who's mm. headed it in. So Lamina probably wouldn't have got there any. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's one of them, really. But listen, it wasn't given. Uh, and again, it, it opened up the whole VAR thing. That took... Something like five minutes to cut to the, the thing. The Wolves fans who were thought were magnificent all night, by the way, they were, even though they knew it was going to benefit them, they were caning and VAR. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, were yeah. hammering it and this isn't football and, just, you know, fuck VAR yeah. and all of this. So, you know, fair play to them. They were, uh, they, I thought they were magnificent all night, to be fair, but it's just rubber. You just look at it and go, this isn't footy. You can't celebrate goals freely yeah. anymore. I mean, we discussed it, didn't we? It's just, yeah, you yeah. can't really celebrate goals like he did before VAR because there's always that uncertainty in the back of your mind like has there been this one was subjective and I understand using VAR when it's like a cert mm. it's subjective it's like just like the, what the ref chose on the pitch let him pick that it's, it's a weird one isn't it people will go well let it I get it but if it's like that make the decision early then we shouldn't have to sit for five I minutes I think as well if you look at the game against Brentford where um, he got sent off. Mm. He got rescinded a few days later, and that took ages of VAR. Mm. So, so you don't there's no know. consistency yeah, with no, 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 no whatsoever. And mm. that's you what's know, worrying about. Obviously, it. from our perspective, yeah, it will. We did do that discussion at lunchtime, and we had over six hundred votes. And the question, quite simply, you can put it in the comments if you really want to, was: Do you celebrate goals differently than before VAR? Because I do. When Everton score a goal, unless it's Outside the box, and you go, there can be nothing. Yeah. No, then I, then you'd properly celebrate it. Absolutely. But especially for us, you don't really score goals. You're killing that as well. Yeah. Because you sort of like, is this going to count? Isn't it? Anyway, moving on. Everton did get a second goal. Fortunately for us, uh, again from another set play, but it was like second phase, wasn't it? Mm. Ball rolled short, McNeil puts it in, Tarky heads it down. Michalenko, Michalenko shoots. shoots, so it's probably third phase. Yeah. It comes out, Mangala wraps it in. I think you've got a still from behind the yep. goal of you, and we're coming out to Mangala, and you know, <laughs> he's cracking it in. And that that one, I could celebrate, yeah, yeah, because I thought they feeling. can't be disallowing that. There's no reason for that one. He hit it really well. His first goal for Everton. Really good strike. Put us 2-0 up. And in that, at that stage, we were in command of the game, weren't we? He sort of made up for the apparent foul that he'd done in the last one by scoring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely in command. And then, obviously, Mangala had a great game. And this was mm. just the cherry on top, really, of it. Mm. Of him coming back in. I think, again, it's shown a strength on set pieces that they won the second ball and won the third ball. Mm. So, I think that's something positive that, you know, we're talking about the Liverpool game, who have a bit of a weakness with set pieces that hopefully we bring that into that game as well. Mm. We almost made it 3-0 not long after it, Dwight McNeil, ball dropped in the box and he hit it. He was flying in the top corner and Lamina got his head on it and deflected mm. it wide for a corner, but I think that would have been 3-0. Yeah, yeah. And that would have definitely been game over anyway at that time. Uh, we were a little bit disappointed at half time, it was only two. Because I think they when it went 2-0, Wolves looked like they felt really sorry for themselves. There yeah. was Everton were getting joy from straight balls. Don was running in behind. Again, a couple went fizzing across the box. They had it. Don't get me wrong. At the other end, occasionally they got in around the back and put a couple of great balls across mm. that no one got on the end of. But I just felt like they were there for the taking. And yeah. at half time, almost came. If you're being, I'm not being critical, but <laughs> you get to half time, you think, oh, have we missed an opportunity to maybe get the third and put that game to bed there? Yeah, well, I think there was a few opportunities that we didn't really capitalise on. The one that 
there were the two that stands out for me really it was as soon after the second goal that got mm. this loud was Dwight McNeil and Calvert-Lewin both pushed and then he plays a three ball onto Calvert-Lewin's path and he just hits it right the keeper yeah. and I was disappointed with oh, that one should have dinked it shouldn't yeah. he and then obviously there was the one where Ashley Young gets on the wing and he just drills it across and no one's no able to get one it gambled. so yeah. I was disappointed with them but mm. It's hard to say, I wish we scored more when we've had the sort of history we have. Oh, so, no, I mean, no. I'm, still buzzing, with, I'm I just, still buzzing with the two goals. Yeah, what I meant was just sat there at half-time just thinking, oh, this yeah. this feels like we could have put this game to bed. Yeah, yeah. Um, because obviously, I know it was much earlier in the season, but we were two up against Bournemouth and, and mm. it started doing that thing that I've seen Everton do before, which yeah, is yeah. miss a good chance and you're like, oh, well. Like Coleman missed an open goal. goal exactly, and things and like that. Like and then, that. You'd end up looking back going, oh my God, why didn't we kill that game off? Villa away even. Mm. You know, I know it was there was 2-1 and Dom runs through and yeah. should score and doesn't and it's, you know gets caught with the ball under his feet and all of that. So you are a little bit wary of that. But we come out second half, they got a corner immediately mm. and Tarkovsky had to make a really good... The corner came in, great ball in and he just gets a flick before two of their players are behind him and takes it away and... That sort of was it, really, for Wolves. Yeah, yeah. They didn't... From there, it was... And then the they had one more, which was a side for folly across the goal. Was and that the one where Tarkowski was the other the inside, and we had Tarki hooking one away. And Ashley Young cleared it from the six-yard box. Yeah. That was good. So there was a couple of those moments, but Pickham... Not a proper solid Didn't chance. really have anything to do. Second half of no diddy other than the stuff he'd expect, and... I thought Cunha was good for them. I thought he carried on trying to do the right thing. Yeah. But he looked a little bit on his own. Um, I thought, Stan Larson was a good player as well. Yeah, he's good. But I thought Tarki... I mean, I know he had a couple of half chances in the first half, but I thought Tarkovsky coped with him quite mm. well really. They they were missing him. Sort of what Barley likes in it. Yeah, he likes the fella. physical yeah. aspect where he can get stuck in and, and use his body and the strength of it. And, mm. you know, um, We come forward, obviously. We got ourselves another goal. Mm. from another set piece <laughs> uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin thought he'd scored or certainly the stadium announcer Rossi thought he'd scored to make it 3-0 in swinging corner by Dwight Yeah, and um, it's gone in off Dawson Dom jumped for it but it went in off Dawson and it's 3-0 Do you think it was a foul from Indy and the keeper before that? That's been a big that, conversation Yeah, yeah he, He's backing into the goalie Yeah and he maybe definitely puts him off a little bit. He maybe puts him off a little bit. You might argue the goalie's got to be stronger. Yeah, because he, he doesn't actually grab him. And yeah, he's, he's not exactly under, the biggest lad. Yeah. He's just in his way, isn't he? And he's sort of off balance. But he should deal with it better. Dawson maybe is a little bit unlucky. I don't know. It's him on the sort of the arm and bounces yeah. in, doesn't it, for three 0 and that obviously was game over then and, and you could relax then and think, okay, uh, these these don't look like they've got anything to come back from this now. They look like they yeah. were, like I said before, they were sort of feeling sorry for themselves and then three almost became four. Yeah. Ashley Young crosses it and Dom mm. jumps with the goalkeeper. He drops it and Illiman and Jai knocks it in and thinks he scored, but it was a foul. Yeah, it was I a think foul it was an by Carl. At first, from the front view, it just looks like the goalie drops it. Yeah. But when you see the view from behind, Dom actually yeah. like sort of leans on him and, and makes him drop the ball. But then Everton fair play to them; they just carried on going, and and three did become four. Yeah, yeah. And again, another set piece. Uh, Dwight McNeil curls it in, and Dom throws himself at it, flicks it on. Yeah, onto Dawson. and it hits Dawson and goes in. Now they must have got the lines out because he never to him, follow yeah. the flight of the ball. I imagine because again the stadium and I'm sure give him the goal. Yeah, I. Made a very quick judgment in my seat that it was it was an own goal. It wasn't Dom's goal simply because of his reaction at first, mm. and it's that one. Yeah, he lay like that, and he then just he just smiled. put his head into the turf, mm. and I thought he doesn't think he scored. He yeah. doesn't think he scored, and he got up, and everyone was around him. Then uh, everyone Rossi, looked and forward, Rossi no. gave Dominic Calvert Lewin, and he stood there like that. I'm thinking he's thinking I've flicked it. Yeah. Now again, I do think they must have. They must have looked at the flight. That they've got it because it's. There's even things like betting. Yeah. You bet on them to score a goal, and and then you reward it. So they must do the line. I think it's because it, he heads it sort of to the left, and then it goes to the right. But I don't know. Yeah, but it, but you really it's such a drastic. It doesn't theme. matter though, does it? Because if his header is the flight of the ball is yeah. on target. That's what they say. If your effort is on target, then you get even if it ricochets into the other corner, 
Because mm. didn't wasn't Rashford given the first goal on, or was it Brantwaite's own goal? No, it was Rashford goal. Yeah. Rashford, Fair even though Brantwaite smashes yeah. it in, because it looks like it's in anyway. It's on yeah, target. But it's not as drastic of a change as what I was meaning. No, or, no. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. Oh yeah, there's a goal because Pickford's diving in. It went past them that way. Where yeah. that's a flick. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, what right. you have to do is is Calvert Lewin's flick going into the far corner or is it going? Mm. past the post if you, your line of sight is it's past the far post and it hits Dawson and goes in it's obviously not his goal but if it's if it might creep in the corner it's got to be Dom's goal isn't it but anyway it wasn't given it and it meant Craig Dawson was one of Everton's top goal scorers in the Premier League same amount of goals yeah. as Dom I think as well though after that goal I think the rest of the Everton team thought he did score because they all looked really buzzing yeah yeah him. yeah and everyone was really like he finally got his pale type of thing after mm. not getting it but it's really unfortunate that he didn't get it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You want him, you would. It'd have been lovely for him to have to have added one of them in and mm. just been like, you know. I think it shows his strength though as a striker well. that he does attack them spaces and it's sort of the pressure he put on them made them uncomfortable. And he forced basically two on goals. Yeah, he did. He and did. so, I think, although he didn't get the goal, I think he's still done really well. It's almost like assists for a minute. Let's yeah. say that. Um, four nil. Very very comfortable then. Tiny little moan. Are you a little bit disappointed with the manager for not? Or the mm. coaches as well, not just Sean Dyke, the three of them there, so yeah. they all get equal input. Not putting someone like Nathan Patterson on at that, because there was, was 4 0 after like 67 minutes yeah, or something, yeah. so there was, a, there was a good amount of time to get Patterson on the pitch. It seems weird, doesn't it, that when we were 4 0 down against Man United, they brought them both on. Mm. But when we're flying and we're 4 0 up, doesn't need them get a chance. You see, I would have put on. I mean, me personally would have put the O'Brien and Patterson on. Yeah, yeah that's why I was meaning, got yeah. a derby coming up at the weekend. Barkey's nursing his way through games. They went, they went scoring four goals. You mm. know, he could have held off till he went into the seventy minutes and then made the changes. But he could. Have, I just thought he should have took Young off, let yeah. him get the round of applause yeah. that he, his Applaud performance he deserved. Yeah. But it was a good opportunity to give Patterson more minutes when we're winning. And he can, you know, get forward and stuff. He did bring on um, Armstrong. Armando Breuer, oh, yeah. which was a... I mean, what did you make of him? I was really impressed, really yeah, impressed. He had some lovely touches and, you know, he used his physicality well to mm -hmm. hold off some of the defenders. And then he's probably very unlucky that he hasn't got two assists. Yeah, to Everton player, yeah. Really. You said some Albanian fans yeah. weren't happy on The Albanian Twitter. fan Twitter account... They don't. Re they really don't like Jack Harrison. Really human with Jack well, Harrison. Screenshots and everything of them just insulting them. And oh my but god! I think it was very promising. And mm. watching that, you're like, he could do a job here for mm. Everton. And I hope, sort of, he can stay away from their injuries and get a proper runner out of Everton. He looked like it was. It was really interesting because we haven't had a striker like that for a while. He looked like, and we know we can do that. I've wanted him. Yeah, yeah. I think I've people who've watched this channel for a number of years will know that I've bored them for a few years about Armando Breuer. I wanted him. Uh, I loved him when he was at Southampton. I thought he'd, be, yeah, he's a good he'd be perfect for us. He's had obviously he had a bad injury, the knee injury he was unfortunate with, and then he had the Achilles injury in the summer. But he's because he's so different to what we've got. He's someone who we saw the one where Ashley Young switched it lovely and he just killed it yeah, yeah. in the box with his left foot and then switched it to his right and Shot got blocked, I think, and I had the, the two uh, the two that he created mm. for Jack Harrison, <laughs> which he should have ended up. Harrison, as a sub, should have ended up with two goals, and our Mando Breuer should have ended yeah. up with two assists. But I'm confident that he can give us something that we haven't got, something different. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think he opens this Everton team up? You know, people have been talking about a 4 4 2. You know, if he can create them type of goals from striker, say he was creating them for either a Beto or a Calvert Lewin, do you think they convert them chances? Because both Harrison chances were the six yard box, if not right by it. And you know, that's where Calvert Lewin's deadly under mm -hmm. Carlo. So do you think in the future that could be something Sean Dyche would think of as playing them too? I think you can do it. I think even in a 4 4 1 1, mm -hmm. I imagine he could sit in the hole almost yeah. as the 10 because he's someone who runs with the ball. Yeah. But I, what I would genuinely like is a real 4-3-3 with Calvert-Lewin, Breuer and then Jay. Yeah, yeah. You've... I think them three, I think could be, not obviously you wouldn't play that at Man City away, yeah, yeah, you know, but I mean, there'd be like a time and place to play them because I think I've seen him at Southampton, he often played off the left for Southampton, got eight goals that season in the Premier League. Running, cutting in and finishing. 
Mm. So, yeah, he, he can play as the out and out number nine. But I actually think he's a player who, and we saw that last night, he likes dropping into his pockets. He yeah, likes yeah. pulling wide and getting the ball and running at people. And I think he could... Uh, Lovely touch and he's very good at dribbling. Yeah. And he's he's big as well because was, there was an opportunity where he got it on the right and then he runs to the line and he's holding them off whilst the rest of the team pushed yeah. off. Yeah. And then, obviously, we don't score from it, but it's still just promising that, you know, in a situation where you want him to hold it up, he can mm. do it. And he's only... He's just coming back, isn't he? Mm. You know, he had, he's had... Two under twenty one games. Yeah, yeah. Um forty five minutes and sixty three, I think. 60 I think or, oh seventy, wasn't it? Yeah. Two minutes he had sixty. And then he's in you know, he's had a little fifteen minutes, I think it turned out to be with the stop at time. So it was a promising thing and a, a good option, I think. And I've obviously if Evan if he can stay fit, which we all hope he can, he could. I think he could have a good future. Well Dyke's done well with getting Calvert Lewin back to like a good solid mm-hmm. fitness. So hopefully he can have the same effect on Brogan mm-hmm. and we can really build on it. And obviously, Chimiti won't be too far away. Yeah, now. Yeah. He's a little bit behind him, but I don't think he'll be too far away from being back in the squad. And again, that's more options. Yeah, isn't he, it, had a good fit. he had a good pre season. It was probably very unlucky that you know he didn't get the chance to mm. play for us properly at the start of the mm. season. So it's definitely exciting. Yeah, I thought Broyo done really well last night. Mm. I think what was key as well last night for me was the midfield too. Yeah. A Drisha Garner gay in Mangala. I thought Mangala was brilliant. I gave him man of the match. Yeah. Um, a Drisha get him. Give him the platform to play from. Went out and put fires out all over the pitch. I think an issue me and you spoke about in the Man United game was, you know, that first 25 minutes where we looked like we had a bit of a hold mm. in the game. Was that the final pass wasn't quality. Mm. And, like, there was a few situations where if the ball was just a bit better, Everton would have had a better mm. chance to score. I think Mangala coming in, he sort of brought that final ball quality and a bit mm. of calmness in the midfield. And I think that was what was pivotal to us playing so well. Well, we've got his stats, haven't we? Let's have a look at Mangala's stats from last night. There you go. 97% passing accuracy. Superb. Uh, one goal. Won three out of seven of his ground deals. Created one chance and had four ball recoveries. And you can see the hot spots there. But what he's, I think what he's really good at is just keeping things ticking over. Mm. You know, like we said, he's a good passer of the ball, 97% passing accuracy shows that there. Yeah. Keeps it ticking over, he's comfortable, likes to take it, can get around a pitch. And when you've got, you know, a Drisher who goes and firefights yeah, and yeah. nicks the ball back and, and gets stuck in and all of that, I think it's a good... Right now, while we've got injuries as well to Irabunum and to James Garner, them to me look like the best two we've got. Yeah. I think the core can play in there, he doesn't take as much care. The mm. core, the core, when he's in there, is literally just the legs yeah, yeah. to try and get around them, be a nuisance. Where them, them two seem a much better partnership for me to play in there. And again, just like we've been speaking about Armando Breuer and we've been speaking about Yusuf Timothy, getting them, bro- uh, getting Irabunum fit yeah, yeah. and getting Garner fit will give the manager more options for those central areas as well and really make his job difficult because yeah. there's good players there and you go, who, who does he go with? Rather than we know what it is. But um, I just thought Mangala was brilliant last night and he deserved his goal made up for him. He's a player who has got better and better. His yeah. initial opening couple of performances, you were a bit sure like, what he was, yeah. mm, it's happening here. Like, you know, he needs to get himself going. But, He's, for me, he's a player who has got better and better every time he's played. And I think I think last night was, was the best game he's had for us. Capped it, obviously, with a goal. Mm. But it looked good. That little partnership looked good. Is that Is something it? you think we just need to leave alone for a few weeks now? Yeah, I think when, you know, it's been gained to Corey, as much as, you know, I like them both, and I think they are good players, I think they don't really complement each, each other well. Mm-hmm. They've both got that sort of chaotic element to them <laughs> and you know the passing isn't great I know Gay done well quite last night with his passing but you know, this is passing higher than you think though, no you know? I know Not, I don't just mean yeah. you a lot of people say that gives the ball away and you're going it's like high 90s every time mm. which but, is like you know and that last night he was 96% yeah. passing accuracy but I know what you mean yeah yeah what Adrisha does is he leaves his role because he goes charging around and trying to nick it. And I think what Mangala was very good at last night was just dropping into the little pocket and going, well, go on then. Yeah, That's it here goal. for you. Where the core wants to do it. The core wants to go and try and get it back. Yeah. He's, you know, he's the, the core always reminds you when he's running with the bunny. He done this last night. 
you know, if you ever ran when you're playing footy and your shin pads used to flap because <laughs> uh, it's like your, yeah. your socks are down or something. He's like that with the ball. The ball hits every part of his leg. But I'm like, I don't even know how you're doing it. That ball physics doesn't allow that. What's happening? It's like a Tasmanian it, with It's the just ball, like the ball's just like it's never under control. Yeah. Um, where Mangala's quite silky with the ball, gets it and it's in and it's back and it's comfortable and it's back. Mm. And I think the dress is much better on the ball than... than that yeah. people think as well but I think it's the leaving of a position sometimes because he wants to put a fire out yeah, this yeah. Is where sometimes he gets he, jumps he can get caught out um, I just thought them two complemented each other mm. really well last night I think you're right saying that you know James Garner and Iribunum are both coming back so you know Garner is really good at passing and you know he can't help out at like right back and stuff you know mm. we need to rotate and Iribunum had a really good start to his Everton career yeah. you know he's progressing with the ball and ran forward with it maybe he didn't have the fitness but he definitely shown promise in an mm. Everton shirt. He's a young so, player. Yeah, yeah. So he's a young player. So on top of you know Brogy and Schmidt coming back, them two coming back's huge as well. And I think I think here at Boonham, there'll be times when I think the manager could be thinking about playing him as a number ten. Oh yeah, yeah. Just because of the way he yeah, runs he with to, the ball. He got the ball well and he turned. Oh, you know, we want to go fully technical. A double eight. <laughs> you know, you've got Mangala sitting and you say to Garner and here at Boonham, go on then. Mm. Come play, you know, and that would enable him. I actually think McNeil can do a bit of that, yeah. as in not just sit off the striker, but sit a little bit deeper at times. As a midfield, in, as a midfield player, but it'd boon him because then you would have you'd have Mangala who's sitting as at the end, and he can just keep it going like a metronome. A dresser can put fires out, and it'd boon him can travel with the ball because that's yeah. what he's really good at picking it up and just running with the ball through the middle. And and again, he's he, it'd boon him as a player who. You're almost in the melee of things going wrong. Mm. Like it was, we weren't winning and the frustrations are creeping in. We lost him at a time when he was doing really well. Yeah, yeah. And it was just sort of like, oh, we're a boon and was out injured. Because, because the manager had taken him out and he was sub mm. for a couple of games. You yeah. sort of almost forgot about him and forgot what a good job he'd done at the start of the season. So that sort of, you forget the quality that he was bringing to yeah, us yeah. with the ball. I mean, that Bournemouth so, game, uh, uh, oh, like, apart from the last 10 minutes, he was really good, isn't it? Well, he just ran out of steam. Yeah, yeah. And that was where the manager got it wrong. He should have took him off after 75 and replaced him because he was done. Yeah, because he, he was had winning good tackles. He was bringing the ball forward. Travelling with it. He, yeah. was, he was brilliant. And you do sort of forget about it when you get injured. Because yeah. because he wasn't fully established and we weren't winning regularly. If people will forget about his contribution, mm. but he was excellent in the early part. So we get him back and he becomes an option yeah, again off the bench. Absolutely. That'll help as well. And James Garner can sit, he can play a six as well. And again, it's more, it's just options, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, and being able to go to the Trisha, you look looking tired now because you've, right. you've doing everything. So come and sit oh, here and we can show you. remember, he's what, 36, 35. Now? 35. So and he's so amazing to play still. every game over this mm. Christmas period, but might have to, but. When these come back, at least you have another option where, you know, like that Bournemouth game the last 10 minutes, you can bring someone on mm. like James Garn. Mm. You can sit and, as well, pass. So, yeah, yeah it's definitely, definitely. positive. Uh, another player I would think deserves to mention me was Ashley Young, who I think, barring the United game, has been Everton's best player over the last half a dozen games, like most yeah. consistent. I thought he had a really solid game again last night. Another, you know, obviously scored a goal, which is you know, always sort yeah, of yeah. going to give them kudos for that. But he, he was really good. Let's have a look at Ashley Young's numbers. Here we go. Passing accuracy, 79%. Uh, scored one goal. Final third passes, 12 passes in the final third. I wow. think that was the highest number by an Everton player. Um Tackles completed four, and he had 20 defensive actions, which again was up there with the most defensive action clearances, blocks, and stuff like yeah. that. So you can see him down that right hand side. He's, he's done really well the last half a dozen games, barring United, like you said yeah. on Sunday. I think people sort of put him down, you know, because uh, of his age, and mm. you know, probably myself too. You know, you talk him down because you want that, you know, young, exciting talent. But mm. Quinton said young, but um, <laughs> yeah, but. He's he's been really solid for us, and he's created goals. He's been solid at the back, and I think, you know, when he's had Lindstrom in front of him, Lindstrom has been maybe a bit fearful, or he's scared to go onto his um, right foot to mm -hmm. whip it in, and he has been whipping it in, and obviously getting the assists for it. I think once again, it's just another solid performance from him, and he's shown that he's got mad genetics, hasn't he? That he can still play this well and this long at near forty, mm -hmm. and 
yeah, it's it's been really good what seeing him and um, I'm happy that he's doing well. And I think when we were talking before about, you know, talk how she overhead kick and clearance and it, it dropped into the six yard box and it was actually Young who swooped in mm. and cleared the ball out again and that was another key moment where I think the thing I think that I think you're absolutely right. I think people look at it and go me as well, you look at it and go, he's thirty nine, he shouldn't be in Evans first team. But but that's just an age thing, isn't it? I think you've got to appreciate how well he's doing at the moment. I think most people mm-hmm. do. Um, and he's a brilliant pro. Yeah. Obviously, really good pre. He's got to be for the age and how fit he is and what he's doing. He's obviously works really hard, keeps himself fit, tremendous. Uh, and I think that's key. Now, there's different conversations. Should we be doubling down on a younger fullback? But right now, he's doing really well. Mm-hmm. See, for me, it isn't whether Ashley Young plays at the moment. It's where Ashley Young plays. Yeah. I think Mikalenko. And spoiler, I would play Mikalenko on Saturday mm. for the Derby because I think up against Mo Salah, he's had a good time. Now, hopefully, that'll continue. But I just don't think he's been very good this season. I, I don't know whether he, he obviously got injured in the Merseyside Derby in April, done his name, and then missed, come back in the Euros, didn't he? And played, yeah. didn't play all the games though, and was a bit hit and missed, and then had the injury again in the summer, and then he's already had an injury this season and missed a couple of games. Just doesn't look fit to me. No. Doesn't look sharp. Um, and therefore, see how we go Saturday. If he doesn't have a good game on Saturday, then I would be tempted to put there, yeah. Ashley Young at left-back and play Nathan Patterson at right-back. I think Seamus, good for the bench. And yeah. let Seamus get up to fitness. And what I mean by that is let him be in the squad for four or five games. Than so just... he's training all the time. So he's ready. Stop throwing him back in when he's had a week. Tra- you know what I mean? Yeah. Like let him get... He keeps playing like the game and then he'll be injured. For yeah, because, come be- back. Mm. because Seamus being Seamus, will his leg play. probably falling off and he go, I'll play because you need me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I don't... I don't know what he's like on the training ground as in how he, but his body feels mm. but I think Seamus I know he is the yeah. person who his character is he just wants to he'll just well help him. you even yeah. if he's not right he'll play because he knows the team might need it where I think what we should be doing is if Mikko has another below par game mm. then Ashley Young has gone in and done a really good job at left great for Villa at left back yeah. by the way Leicester away this year for us. He got the assist for Njai, split them with one ball. He's done a good job at left back. No no worries, get on with it. Yeah. Doesn't go on the outside and whip it in with his left foot. Well, Michalenko doesn't, so we're not yeah. losing that. And I think that'll give you the opportunity to put Patterson in and see how Patterson does with the safety blanket of Seamus mm. on the bench as yeah. well. And I think that's how because right now Ashley Young deserves to be in. I don't think I don't think anyone could turn around and go drop him at the moment. Because no, you'd be not. dropping him for the sake of dropping him. Not because he's not playing well, and, and right now he's he's like I've said, he's been Everton's best player over the last half a dozen games. Yeah, for me, I think one of the big critiques with Michalenko as well is when he gets the ball on the wing, he doesn't really cross it in much, and when he does, they're not really of quality. No, and it's I, the area he crosses it from as well. Yeah, there was one actually though in the first half which was a bit mad. Was it the first half? The second? No, it was the second half when we were attacking the Gladys Street. We had the ball on the wing, Dominic Calvert Lewin. Mm. And he crossed it in, and Michalenko was in the middle by the penalty spot, and they had to it away. I was like, "What's he doing at centre <laughs> forward? He just gone to centre forward." <laughs> so I mean, Sean Dyche would probably be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> and it was four 0 at the time, so but it was just <laughs> mad seeing him there. Like, but I think it's the zones he crosses from. Yeah, I think if you get him in round the back, listen, maybe he'll never have it. Maybe he just hasn't got that. Mm thing to throw it in but I like to think if you can get in them areas and put it in a then zone can do it, yeah. people will score from it mm. do you know what I mean so that's something Michael's got to work on and again it might just be that the type of coach we've got is more defensive so that not, isn't really going to develop the attack inside of his game but defensively obviously decent but I just so, think I just think he's below at the moment and definitely. I think it's injuries I really do Um what did you make of NGI's performance? Because obviously he started on the right, ended up on the left. Mm. I think he showed a couple of times, he skinned them, turned and yeah, went. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, but it was t- too few and far between. Yeah, I don't think it was his greatest game for Everton. Mm. And, you know, I told you a stat before that, you know, he had 100% pass accuracy for us, he didn't misplace one. And even his long balls, neither them, none of them were play- misplaced. Mm. So I think it wasn't his best game. And I think at the minute, Sean Dyke is just playing him everywhere, trying to find... His best position, I think, it 
his end product hasn't been great for us so far. Mm. You know, he he can beat a man undeniably. Yeah. And he can work it into the box. It's just getting that final shot off, which has been di- a bit disappointing recently. Yeah. And so... I'm just forgetting his numbers up while you're talking. Yeah, for me, I would like to see him have a proper go. I know we had that 20 minutes, but have a proper go down the middle because you mm. see how he connects the midfield and the attack, and I think mm. he'd do really well there. And obviously he's got the defensive numbers to back it up. But right now, I don't feel like playing him on the right doing him any, uh, any better than what he was doing on the left. But I think that's where he'll play, won't he? Why? Yeah. So I would, I personally would rather him be on the right mm. because I think wide he can at least cross it the way he's facing. Yeah. I think when he has to come inside all and this this again another little tiny moan was that when he put Jack Harrison on last night, Sean Dyke, he put him on the right. I was like, leave it's, put him yeah. on the left and just leave him Jai where he is. Yeah. Leave him on the right, put had Jack on the left and see if he can get wide and put crosses in with his left foot rather than having to check back. Just you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just leave people. I mean, you've just spoken about it a lot, haven't you? That Harrison's best numbers were all from the left. Mm-hmm. That's where he does his best work. Yeah. And sort of, he's always been forced out onto the right. Mm-hmm. And I get it, even Dai's main position was being a left winger, but yeah. it's not. So, yeah. forcing him into Jack Harrison's strongest position for no real reason. Yeah. It was just try him. Just yeah. try him and see, and we might get more off him. Uh, and Jai had one shot from outside the box. You give me the stats and I, and I just checked it there. He had a hundred percent pass completion mm. and long balls as well, which is incredible. It was sixteen passes. Yep. It's not a lot, but it was a hundred percent. He never gave the ball away, um, which I think is incredible. Completed the hundred, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, which is mad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so there, them numbers completed three out of eight of his take ons. Which mm. less than fifty percent. Seven ball recoveries, so good defensive numbers, of yeah. course. Dispossessed twice. Um, anything else? Fifty percent of his tackles, three tackles out of six, so three was quite high. Yeah, yeah. One interception. Committed one foul. Was, was fouled twice. So yeah, they're not. I mean, not terrible numbers, but as an attacking player, though, yeah. someone you want to watch and someone that excites you. So maybe his defensive numbers go a bit under the radar because you're expecting him to, you know, beat a few players and then score. But obviously, the, the Fruz again, defensively, he's a good player. And that's why I would like to see him more in that 10 he, position. He's the player when he picks the ball up, you get excited about yeah, yeah. And that, And again, he when, well when Breuer it. did come on, mm. that was what got me. What's he going to do? What's he yeah. going to do with the ball? He's running towards the goal. I don't think Everton haven't got enough of them. No. And I think John Blaine said to me today, he said the one thing I noticed about them was they had two or three in jazz. Yeah, so yeah. they had like, Cunha. you know, Cunha, who was someone who was trying to do it. Obviously, Nori is someone who picks the ball up and runs mm. with it and, and gets you stretched a little bit. Uh, Goncalo Guedes was trying to get on the ball and run with it yeah. and you think if Everton had a couple of them I would open the pitch up we've seen with Njai when he got in the team I would open it up a yeah. bit Breuer it'll open it up a bit you know with a boon and maybe it's so players that excite you. they're the ones well they're the they're your match winners aren't they yeah. they're your players who do open it up for goals goals win games so there you go uh, let's have a look at the overall numbers from the game the match stats there we go. Everton 4, Wolves nil. 13 shots from the Toffee, 6 for Wolves on target, 4 for Everton, 2 for Wolves. Both had two big chances each. Possession 44-56 in Wolves' favour. Um, I think the XG last night was 1.2. Yeah, Everton didn't have a great XG. 1.2 for Everton and 0.89 for Wolves, so... You could argue one one if you were talking yeah. XG, um, because you've obviously below one point five, you round back down to one, and, and above mm-hmm. point five, you round up to one. So if you were just XG <laughs> in it, you could have gone with a one one. Um, I think with some of the chances you missed, like Jack Harrison missed as well. I'm surprised that the XG was so low. It's the way they are, isn't it, and the thing, and mm-hmm. but yeah, but I mean the the real the real thing, and you know, Everton scored six goals. Yeah, could have had another two or three. Yeah, and um, you know. Maybe something like 8-3 would have been at the right score, you know. Uh, but it was a big win for Everton and a very, very, very important win. And hopefully it's the, uh, you know, we get a few start more of these it, yeah. and just start winning these games. Got obviously a massive game at the weekend against Liverpool. 
anything can happen in a Merseyside derby. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. We're going to carry on now on Trophy TV Premier. If you want to become a Premier member, the link's there. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe the video. We're heading towards that 100,000 sub marks. So thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, otherwise, see you all later.